this time on Delusions of the Kind Hearted. What's up, everybody? It's Dr. Simwood, episode 17. It's Low Jack. We're back with you this week with a full dive in on Xbox. Everything Xbox this week, along with the Bethesda acquisition, they finally got it closed down. They uh, are making Bethesda a first party studio which means that a bunch of their games are going to end up on Game Pass. Uh, they're going to be honoring everything that they have done prior to be on the PS5 exclusives and everything that across the board. And of course, they've already announced that some games won't be exclusive. I'm sure there's going to be a, a, a big grab bag full of different things that's going to happen with this new acquisition, of course. Uh, but that's what I'm going to go in today. We're going to talk all about that, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Thank you guys for watching everything else. We've been getting some numbers on all the... Uh, all the content across the board, everything has grown uh, over the past month or so. We uh, it just get it gives us motivation to keep on going, and uh, let's get right into it, man. That's uh, eight studios that they've gotten. It was a multi-billion-dollar deal. They just signed it as we are speaking right now. Uh, let's just dive in uh, at first. We are getting just every kind of game you can imagine with this acquisition actually and it's going to be a bunch of western first party rpgs xbox really slacked on that last generation i think truly last generation they were the most uh, consumer and family friendly across the board but of course their marketing in 2013 completely wrecked the entire generation for them and nothing that they did seemed to get the eye of the uh well let's just say the people that are really uh, in the games media that are quote unquote professional, they are mostly, as for what I watch, uh, Sony fanboys, and uh, that's neither here nor there. Sony won out the last generation. I don't think they deserve to win this one. Uh, most of the stuff that they're doing is not uh, catering to gamers, it's not doing anything but just giving you walking simulators and very beautiful same games every single time and then you get some indies sprinkled through there it's not doing anything good for the multiplayer side of gaming uh the console itself is holding stuff back uh now like i said these are opinions so there's factual information scattered throughout though i promise you that but we're not here to dog playstation we're here to talk xbox so for me personally, the most important one is definitely Bethesda Gameworks itself. Uh, Elder Scrolls, Fallout, that new Starfield looks interesting. Um, you know, Zenimax Studios right with them because they're going to work directly with them with the uh, Elder Scrolls Online, which I'm really, I'm a lapsed player on, but I think that that's probably one of my favorite MMOs. I know. And uh, Fallout 76 has grown a long way. I just haven't really had time to get back into it and play it. But for those to be what they are, and you look at what they are now compared to how they started, Bethesda proves that they keep on working on their stuff. You always have the jank, but what game doesn't? Um, then you got id software you have doom you have you know they could bring back quake that would be awesome i know you have champions but not really many people play that or talk about it um just the arcane isn't a studio for me but just the go on my thing about how many different types of games we're getting we're getting a new city builders out of it this acquisition was a very big deal and it there's absolutely nothing that uh would make me happier than to see all of these just become Xbox exclusives. And the reason that I say that is Sony cannibalizes content for their side. And it, it's it's not uh, conducive to the consumer. But if one side is going to do it, the other side needs to do it. There needs to be more reasons to come to Xbox for the people that say there isn't. It's the stronger console, better controller for me personally, uh, way more uh, consumer friendly. Most of the stuff that is consumer friendly that Sony is doing is off of the Xbox playbook. Uh, if you look at the way that PlayStation now started and you look at it what it is now, they've completely ripped everything that Xbox did and tried to do their own thing and still haven't made it better. And if you're going to copy somebody, you should make the thing better than what they made. That's just my two cents on that. Now, a new Fallout, we're way, way far away from that. We got 76, and you saw what that, that is, and what it turned into is great. But the Elder Scrolls Six is supposed to be coming after Starfield. I feel like Starfield is probably this year, if I had to guess. Um, 
And then of course we have death loop is coming out and that's going to be the ps5 exclusive they're going to go ahead and stick with that tango game works i'm really hoping we get it even within three that would be awesome um and i'm going to deep dive into all of this i'm just trying to get all the uh little cliff notes out of the way first i'm going to do uh, a lot of talk in this episode i don't really have many clips for you guys um but yeah doom eternal wasn't really for me um not necessarily gameplay wise but like i didn't want rpg mechanics in doom that's not what was missing from the game nothing was missing from the game we just needed more of doom 2016 and it would have been perfectly fine that being said i haven't finished eternal so i, I'm, I might get back around to that now that i got the series x and it runs a lot smoother on there um rage when i played it i had the one x when it came out and every time i would play to my capability it would freeze the game lock it and shut the entire game down I'm not the best in the world anymore. I'm pretty good, though, and that, that just shouldn't happen. You shouldn't be forcing your game to shut down by using the mechanics in the game too fast. Shouldn't make that happen. That's ridiculous. Um, if the button can be pressed, it should have an input that is right and done from a studio that big. There is no reason for that. <clears throat> that being said, I think Rage is a good concept. I think I like the first one a little bit more, but just for there to be that many shooters... Um, coming out of a studio that makes rpgs and they're not completely ruined yet awesome playground games we get a racing game out of there and now they're also making the new fable or the fable remake however you want to look at it um that's two more genres we're hitting right there already going back to tango gameworks with the evil within stuff that's another genre guys we got survival horror out of this. We have RPGs, first-person RPGs. We have a, a racing sim game with the other Forza team. We have the Forza Horizon from, from Playground. We have the Fable. That's another different kind of RPG. Arcane. You have all of those different kinds of games and different things that people were saying was missing from last time. And there's... I think... From what I'm seeing right now, and of course, Sony is Sony, but what, what I'm seeing right now is Xbox is putting themselves in a position to have every kind of big game able to come out on Game Pass because of their acquisition, because of them being first party now. Um, there is a flip side of that, and we'll get into that a little bit later, but it's, uh, it's, a, it's just a very interesting thing for me. Um, we're, we're probably in one of the most interesting times in gaming, and at the same time, if you've watched any of the other stuff, I think one of the worst times in gaming as far as games go, but as far as what is being done around them and the culture itself, we're in a pretty good spot. We just need to stop having things all be aimed towards a casual audience so you'll sell more. You would sell more if you made a quality product for the people that built this industry into what it was, not the casual gamers that are going to put it down in a week anyway. But... Let's talk about let's let's do a little dive on uh on Tango Gameworks real quick. Um it's kinda gonna be out of order, man. I'll just jump all over the place. Now Tango uh the guy that started it, he was the original Resident Evil creator, the original uh guy that did the story and everything on there. And he is he directed hands-on for Evil Within, and then Evil Within 2, he took a back position. He was still, you know, the main guy, but he let someone else take the reins. Now, both of them were great games. Um, it's kind of hard to go back to them for me personally. I don't know. It's like, because I played stuff afterwards, the control scheme's hard to get into, and the first-person mode they put into Evil Within 2 was... It just did not feel great. Um, but for them to have that background and a guy that's that good on a first party level now and for the fact that the next game they're putting out the the ghostwire tokyo completely off the wall from anything they've done so far i'm curious to see what the next actual survival horror game after this one is um and like what is a survival horror game that's made to come to game pass that's the most interesting thing with this entire deal for me is the game pass angle like we see a lot of games that come to game pass day and date that aren't gears of war aren't halo um they are i guess you would say double a but maybe we even need to make a new kind of um 
subgenre for what a Game Pass game is because, like I said, you have the Gears, you have the Halos, but then you have Crackdown 3 that was supposed to be a big deal, but there was just nothing to be done to make that any better than it was going to be. Um, it doesn't make sense to me that they can put in as much of the money for a subscription-based game. Now, that being said, look at World of Warcraft, look at a lot of other examples, but just this many at, at, at a time, all the time, and for this many studios to be bought and to be putting stuff out. Yeah, stuff's on rotation. Everybody's going to be releasing stuff throughout the years, but, like, okay, it's a first-party game, so does that mean it's always going to be on Game Pass once it's there? And is it a... Uh, is it wrong of them to rotate the games because we're paying for the subscription and because they are first party for us to get the game again? Is it, is it wrong for them to make us have to buy the game still to keep our stuff or, you know, should they always have the games if they're first party? Once they're on Game Pass, they should stay there. That's how I feel. But then you have the people who talk about catalogs getting bloated and this, that and the other. I don't confide on that at all i think that's silly if you look up what you want to look at that's why they have genre tabs and all that um it's it's crazy man it's, it's crazy time um because you have the narrative walking games you have racers on there you have just everything you can think of and uh <coughs> i really uh when looking at this and looking at what Game Pass can can be, and then thinking about what it's probably going to be, and then looking over on the Sony side and all their games are going to be sixty, seventy dollars a pop every time. And then if you look on paper, the Series X is the stronger console. So the stronger console has the subscription service with the most games on it, most triple A games on it, most double A games on it. The, uh, maybe not the most indies, because Sony is a big, big place for indie games. Um, I just think that Xbox is putting himself in the position to, I don't think there's a way to win anymore. I think that it's too big and that the audience is going to be where certain things are. And I think there's probably more pockets of gamers than ever, but I think that a lot of the pockets are quiet and a lot of the people that are the loudest about it are the ones that are ruining it. Um, I just hope that that doesn't translate into what kinds of games stay on Game Pass. Like, I don't want to lose some really good AAA stuff for a Fortnite clone or a uh, another ripoff of COD. Like, I just don't want to do that. I don't want to see Game Pass turn into a way to push microtransactions. I don't want to see Game Pass go up to $25 an hour. or not? Uh, excuse me, $25 a month just because it gets popular. Um, they have more people on Game Pass than they ever have. I think the last time that I looked at it was about $18 million. So, you know, you do the math, 10, 15 bucks per sub. There is no reason that no, any of these games should have a problem coming out and making money. And then they'll make money off of DLC and back-end stuff because that's on sale automatically, too. Um, I really got to say, for the Bethesda stuff, my most exciting thing is Elder Scrolls Six. It doesn't matter what console that comes out on. I'm buying that game. I'm playing that game way too much just period end of story it's happening that's what i'm doing uh, i'm the most excited about that from anything with the bethesda acquisition it's more so the potential of what can come with these and the new franchises that they could come up with um and what a big giant scale rpg team can do that is conducive to the game pass model um Because with them being first party, it seems like all of the games will be on Game Pass. Because that's what they said. That's what they marketed it. And as soon as they don't do that, there's going to be a mass thing where everyone's freaking out on them. Because, you know, when you're in second, you can't make a single mistake. Um, just like them having a backpedal prior this year whenever they uh, did all that stuff with gold. But that's on another episode. You guys can go back and watch that if you want to check it out. Um... Yeah, on, on the Bethesda side, I definitely, definitely, definitely don't want to see them dumb things down. Like, I don't want to get a bunch of uh, Wolfenstein Youngbloods. I don't want... Um, 
a bunch of 76 games. I, I don't want them to be like, oh, well, this is a small, a small like 20, 30 hour RPG instead of our, our natural thing because it's a Game Pass game. Like, I just, I'm scared of them watering down as a company. Um, but that being said, the, the narrative, that's, that's just what I'm going to choose to use. The narrative right now is that Bethesda's gone downhill anyway because they put out Fallout 76, completely marketed it, that it was going to be broken. It was an experiment. It was their first time doing a multiplayer type game and everyone still shit on it and still ripped it apart when they were completely transparent, completely clear about what the game was going to be and how long it was going to take to make. And uh, I don't think that these companies get enough credit for that kind of stuff. Because I really don't think they're in a bad place. I think that people expect things to come out when they're supposed to. I think that people answer to others when it comes down to it. And uh, people that don't game and aren't into gaming are the ones that have all the money for this stuff. And that is always going to affect everything. And as long as that's the case... There's going to be stuff like that, like I was talking about. Um, Evil Within 3 is another one that I hope we see. The second one definitely set us up to get a third one. Um, and maybe Evil Within 3 could actually be stuff actually leaking over into the real world. Because that's kind of the angle I saw from it. And if not, it would just be cool Like you could get Simmons to be their own character. I might have gotten the name wrong in there. But uh, the the girl that Jessica Carpenter um, played, and then you have uh, Anson Mount was uh, the main protagonist. Both of those actors are really good at what they do, and uh, both those people are really good at what they do, and they really don't. I don't. I feel like there's not enough big actors anymore in games like that. It seems like a lot of times when there are actors nowadays, they're in the big AAA games and they're just in there for a name. Like for instance, like all of the Call of Duty franchises bringing people in there. That's silly. Um, there's no reason for a uh, celebrity to be in a first-person shooter. That makes absolutely no sense. Sorry about that. I was trying to find something for you guys. Could not find it. Um. Yeah, so if we're going to get more Wolfenstein, I want real Wolfenstein. I don't want whatever uh, the young blood was. Um, please stop putting health bars in shooters. Stop it. That's a whole nother, that's a whole nother conversation, though. Um, Starfield. Now, Starfield? That's a weird one for me. I don't know what to expect, because it's like, alright, we have Fallout... And, like, we know, like, what the actual, like, moment to moment is going to be. But, like, what do they mean by space? Like, is it going to be, like, the outer worlds where it's just, like, a weird-looking planet when you're doing the same things? Or is it going to be, like, we're going to be, like, having a spaceship and going from place to place and actually doing some stuff in space space? Um, for us, knowing about this game for so long, we just don't really know anything about it. And uh, maybe that's better. Maybe it's it's way better, but I, I just think the longer that stuff is announced, and I know that there's marketing and stuff uh, behind the scenes, and that's why they announce things so so far out in the future, but the longer the, a game takes to come out, the less likely it is to actually do well. Just We have many examples of that. People have way too much time to think about it and think about everything that they're not going to like. And whenever you're already thinking about all the things you're not going to like, once that one or two things happen that you thought was going to, your entire, your entire opinion is going to be tainted. And nobody wants that, man. That's not a good thing. Um, yeah, so, I mean, Elder Scrolls, Wolfenstein, Arcane stuff, Evil Within, uh, whatever else Tango can come up with next, I kind of feel like we'll probably get something different after The Wire. Before Evil Within 3. But I'm hoping that Evil Within 2 by then sells enough copies to make it worth doing. I just don't see that guy stopping on the second game. There's still so much more that could be unlocked in that story and uh, redone and done better. Um, Doom is back being bigger than ever. I hope they don't make it an RPG again. I would like to see... Maybe at this point they need a spinoff or something like that. Like 
imagine a slower paced something like in the doom world but like you're playing like almost maybe like a stealth based type deal um but you can still be lethal but maybe make it limited ammo something like that that might be kind of cool um just there's so much potential guys so much potential so yeah man bethesda is xbox xbox is bethesda i think that is one of the smartest things they could have done and uh really man like what what more do you want like people say well there's not enough different kinds of games on xbox they'll just like let's just go through it one more time with this acquisition they have first person rpgs that can go third person now first person shooters that are some of the best most quality first person shooters you've played last generation they have multiple mmos they have a new city builder they have um whatever you want to call arcane's games i don't know what to call those i don't know if i've already said that i'm sorry but just that is covering a lot of genres it's it's pretty damn insane if you ask me and maybe you didn't but you're here aren't you <laughs> so with that being said i want to move on over and let's just talk about everything um just off the top of my head here that's how we're doing it tonight everything that xbox has now and owns now as a first party studio and what that could mean for the future of xbox and the future of games so I'm just going to rattle off just what I remember off the top of my head here. Um, we have Undead Labs. We have 343. We have um, Bethesda, like I just said. We have Playground Games. We have the uh, the other Forza team. I can't remember. Uh, Turn 10? Yeah. Uh, we have um, The Coalition. We ha and that's the Gears team. We have the Initiative, which I'm going to get back to. That's going to be a big deal, and I have a lot of ideas on what that could be. Um, Undead Labs is probably my favorite Xbox studio at this point. Uh, we'll have to see with Halo Infinite and 343 what they can do. But let me keep on moving on. They own Mojang. They own Minecraft still, and it's on PlayStation as well. So they still have that going. That's always going to make money. There's always going to be a new kid to get into Minecraft. There's always going to be a new game that's based off of Minecraft for adults. So just that little stockpile. They have... Um, They have Ninja Theory now, the Hellblade 2. Like, that is a big deal. There's no way that Hellblade 2 and Sinuous uh, Saga is not going to be a masterpiece of a game. It's going to make you think. If it's anything like the first one, and it almost has to be, and just the money that they're putting behind it, I feel like that game is going to be talked about for a long time to come in certain pockets of people that actually want to think in their games. Um, one second, let me see what else we got. All right, we have Obsidian. That's the one that gave us Outer Worlds. That's the original guys that made the, the Fallout New Vegas. Um, so much potential, man. We have the if We Happy Few creators. I didn't really get around to playing We Happy Few, but the concept and the type of world building they have is great. And, and that's, that's actually another thing, just real quick. All of these studios and the fact that they're all up under one banner... If they put any of these guys together or all of these guys together to make something, like say you put Tango Gameworks horror team with the open world team of a Fallout and then with the zombie makers or whatever of... You know, and you can mix and match all of these. You can mix and match all of these. There's the zombie creators of State of Decay 3 and, like, the loot and all that. And just get all these teams working together. You can make so many masterpieces. And then, um, whew, I'm not going to say Sony doesn't have a chance because I know they're doing plenty. And I will have the PS5 and be covering that eventually. But just the types of games are going to be different that come out of Xbox because... From my experience being mostly an Xbox gamer, I played PS4 for a while. I started on Super Nintendo, went back to regular Nintendo, had a PS1, had a PS2, and then went to 360. Um, PS3, 
was well mine got stolen i didn't have it very long but the ps3 was okay it had some things here and there that i wish i could have played more but really at the end of the day it was all about having a 360 that's where the best online was that's where the most of the multiplayer that's where the most competitive multiplayer is on controller um almost every multiplayer game that i've played on playstation was much easier to play on there than it was on xbox and i prefer the xbox controller just saying the audience is more of a single player casual indie game audience over on playstation a lot of xbox players want to be connected we want to be on multiplayer all the time we want to at least have something co-op um and i think they have the right teams to make some good co-op games here i really do but let me let me deep dive into what i want from state of decay 3 real quick anybody who's played state of decay 2 knows that it started out a great single player game had some bugs here and there but just menus and systems and combat and uh character interaction uh different kinds of characters uh stats that matter um even like mental statuses that matter just all the systems behind the scenes in that game are amazing uh the gameplay itself for the multiplayer kind of got wonk sometimes you have some people just disappearing all of a sudden you're riding in a car and it just disappears and you're not in the car anymore and you're flying through the air um getting attacked by invisible zombies uh juggernauts in the floor just you name it that game has had issues and had problems but the entire time what it has also done has been one of the most fun experiences that i've ever had in a video game and with state of decay 3 and the cinematic that they showed beforehand i think they're gonna step up that survival up a little bit more um what i would really like is for them to add in aiming down sights slow the pace up a little bit um up the realism of the graphics a little bit more which i'm sure they will two looks amazing on the series x update just by the way um actually coming up this week we we're going to have a uh, us finishing the heartland on the series x so make sure you guys tune in and check that out we got plenty of other state of decay videos on the channel if you want to see them um play that game play the second one first for sure because you're gonna need to know some lessons for this third one um but yeah, with the uh, the zombified deer and, and stuff like that, like I'm hoping that they add some crazy animals into this one. Um, I'm hoping that possibly we're done with the plague heart thing. And uh, it looked like at the end of the Heartland episode, um, maybe aliens are to blame for this. And I hope they don't go that route, but whatever. As long as we stay killing zombies and monsters and that kind of stuff, and we're trying to loot and get food and survive... I'm fine with it. Just don't make anything glow any more than it already does, and I'm good. Um, I would like for them to, um, yeah, put aim down sights on there. Maybe add in friendly fire to make it a little less arcadey for that side of it. That probably won't happen. That's fine. That's neither here nor there. Um, trying to think what else exactly that it would make sense without me having some gameplay. Um, Maybe a different way, like instead of having the stamina bar, have maybe make it to where you can tell your character is getting tired more so. Like, yeah, they get tired and they start swinging less, but maybe make it to where you have to know what's up with that. And this, this right here, this last thing I'm going to say about it, actually, this isn't even about State of Decay. This is just for games as a whole. Um, stop. How do I say this? There should always be a slider to turn off anything in a HUD. Just period. If there's a HUD, I should be able to turn every single aspect of it off or on however I want to. Um, I should be able to actually pick things up. I don't want to like see a wheel spinning around like if my character's scavenging something i want them to be opening drawers i want them to be actually looking into something i just don't want a wheel that's telling me that something's happening that's stupid we're way past that i want it to be more like red uh red dead and i know that a lot of i'm not even going to say a lot of people because i really just feel like it's a small group that is loud um people complain that it's things take too long to do on red dead redemption and it's just like think about things and when you do them how long they take 
we need more of that. We need more of there actually being some grounded realism in the things that you do in games, in some of them, because that makes them inherently more fun because of the way that you have to react whenever your character is an actual human. Think about it. I'm, I know that I'm right on that one. Now, if you're wearing space boots and shit like that, fine, go for it. Do whatever you want. But if I'm a human in a zombie apocalypse, I want it to be as grounded as possible. If I'm a tactical first-person shooter guy, I want it to be grounded as possible. I don't want to be jumping over fences. Um, it'd be nice if there was a little bit more like to like the food thing and like morale. Like if you could actually um, with make it interesting though like actually have dinners at the table with your characters or whatever and like you know them talk about the week or uh maybe have some kind of cinematic and it be changed depending on who's talking or uh like who who you have in your group like uh have it be like a cinematic and then have a conversation around the table and like you choose who you want to take sides with afterwards um something that i think might be cool but also could ruin the entire experience and might make it just lagged out have it be a mass map with multiple settlements of survivors that are all players with the npc scattered out as well and then um keep the time to kill low and don't maybe that wouldn't work with the systems though let me think about that because if you have a character that's all the way maxed up, but like I guess that would be the same difference. It's a role play game at the same at the end of the day. So like some people are gonna be more badass than you. Period. So they'd probably have to iron that out. And the third in, third entry of the series probably isn't the time to do that. They probably have to start something else next time. But I would like to see State of Decay turn into a massive multiplayer online game. That would be great with the combat they have, the skills they have, the systems they have. Just to add in that many more players, if they could get the servers for it. That would be a fun game, and it would be one that's uh, casual enough, but not so casual that it's boring for people that know what they're doing. Not being an asshole, I'm serious. Um, yeah, State of Decay 3, definitely my most an anticipated... Anticipated? <laughs> definitely my one I'm most excited about. Uh, Elder Scrolls 6 is definitely the uh, Bethesda game that I'm most excited about. Um, but there's a lot more, man. Just Halo Infinite, it, it, it could be, it could be the turning point for Halo, but I feel like a lot of these assholes, yes, I'm talking to some of you, hopefully not, but I know some of y'all aren't going to like this. A lot of these assholes already have a tainted view because they saw a 4K game being played at 1080p on their 4 20 whatever the hell it is uh 240 excuse me pixel phone because their internet is shit and then they made their judgment on something it was going to be a launch game it looked pretty for a launch game it looked like it was going to be enough for a launch game and it's something that's going to be as a service game so it's going to grow over time anyway bethesda not bethesda um 343 hasn't really made a good halo game yet besides the multiplayer so i mean really no matter what they put out you're not going to be happy with it we could have been playing a game right now and we could have had something that would have already been growing and instead we've already gone through however many people in the back end that are in like the development teams and all that um now i did put up a thing on the last week of the week before with the dev breakdown the sandbox is pretty much 100 percent done uh they're going to be adding in legacy weapons and this that and the other but we could have already been having that the game could have been growing in a live audience with a live audience and we probably would be further along whenever the game launches it would probably be in a better spot if it would have launched when it was supposed to and grown with us now whatever we get in the beginning is going to have more stuff in it which is going to probably be more broken because they've redone so many things from the ground up now i'm not 100 percent on that and there's no excuse anyway because if you're a first party studio and you're one of the big guys i don't i think we should hire they should be held to a higher standard there should be better q a testers there should be way more done to make sure that things aren't broken um now i know with a bunch of different types of internet and people's capabilities and this that and the other there's so many different problems that can occur but i didn't choose to make consoles i chose to, i chose to be a gamer and a content creator so we kind of need the content to work for us to create stuff around your games guys y'all are the ones that are multi-billion dollar companies um i'm just this is the first big chunk of news that's got me just all the way high like things are kind of coming into the picture now that's that's really what i'm happy about um big 
big triple A development teams getting bought is like I guess I can see how some people would consider it not scary, that's the wrong word, but like worrisome for quality because they might just get shoved if they don't perform this, that, or the other. But I think we're so big now that we need more um I don't think this is a word, but conglomeratization. Conglomeratization. I don't know if that's a word, but I, I like the way it sounds. Um, we need more of that. We need more people being under one banner and being more um, working together because I feel like a lot of these teams do a lot of things well, but then there's something else that if they would have had this guy or that guy from this team or that team, the games could be closer to masterpieces. I don't think that a masterpiece uh, or a perfect game can be made anymore. I, I think that there are too many people that just want to hate things and... Um, I think there are too many people that think that their way is the only way. I may come across that way a little bit, but my main thing with this channel and why I wanted to do it is I feel like the side of gaming that I want is being murdered. Not forgotten. I feel like it's being actively taken out of our hands. Um, all realism has pretty much gone out of AAA games. Uh, everything is um, colorful and... Uh, if no, get mad at me. Effeminate. Uh, there's not a whole lot of stuff just made for dudes. And I'm talking about chick dudes, too. Like, um, I want some serious stuff every once in a while. I don't want everything to be fairy farts and rainbows. Like, I, I want Rainbow Six was supposed to be a tactical game for people that liked realism. Not something for people that want purple boots and pink camadot, camadot pocos. <laughs> um, and no, I'm not talking about the gay character. I don't care about that. That's fucking stupid. Um, but you shouldn't run a game into the ground that was the premier grandfather of tactical shooters, best counterterrorism unit in the world, and now you have them shooting each other in an arena full of people with non-lethal rounds. That's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. But that's, uh, that shouldn't be where shooters are. And uh, I'm happy that Xbox has done this and bought these studios because at least we'll get some quality of the other side or at least more of it is how i feel and uh, i think because of them being on a subscription service we'll probably get more games a year that are fun um i'm just hoping like i was saying earlier tonight i'm really hoping that we don't get a bunch of dumbed down content and uh i hope double a doesn't become single a and triple a becomes double a because we're on a subscription base um, and what does that do for free-to-play games what does that mean for battle royale games which uh that might be a time for another whole podcast because I think Battle Royale, as soon as it started getting good, kind of shot itself in the foot. All the most popular Battle Royale games aren't even about one life to live. They're not about urgent situations. They're about maxing out how many heals you have and cheesing the other enemy with a long time to kill and building houses and uh, jumping fences, which is supposed to be a, a realistic military shooters. Um, PUBG killed itself because they couldn't get the desync right. PUBG is the only, legitimately, the only real Battle Royale experience out, and they are the worst one, and they're my favorite. Um, I would like to see what a first-party Battle Royale game could be. That would be nice. But sticking to Xbox, um, Rust. Rust is coming to Xbox. They just put that trailer out, so let's check that out real quick. Now, the game's been out forever on, on PC. Uh, it's been out for a long time. That's actually why I didn't get into it. I will probably grab it on console, though, just because it'll be about the same knowledge base, except for the few guys that already had it on PC that wanted to jump on and just wreck shop. Um, I know the game's mostly PvP, but just the size and scope of it and the semi-real look of it looks pretty cool. I like the art style. It just looks crappy. And... Uh, the literal rust on everything is a, it's appealing to me. I just think it looks fun. looks like a good time. Um, it's going to be great, man. I, I think that as long as none of these things get delayed to hell and they get the right voice actors and they get the right people behind everything to do the job, I think we're in the best spot ever for first party studios uh, on the Sony side as well. But I just feel like that gets covered a thousand times over and I don't have the PS5 yet because I chose not to get one and now you can't 
we're starting to see some restocks though so we'll, we'll have one eventually for the channel and i'll start covering that a little bit more and uh, you'll probably see a different side of uh, what people can think about playstation than you used to um but yeah, I'm not even necessarily trying to be a Xbox fanboy. I just think Xbox gets shit on when it shouldn't. And I think that they've been the entire time doing the most consumer-friendly thing. And I think that most of the marketing and the things that you guys got mad about and said were stupid back in 2013, if you look into it, we're doing almost all of those things. And if the gaming side of it isn't, augmented reality even is being used now. Every single person that you know is using streaming on their device, and a whole hell of a lot of people stream from their consoles. All Xbox wanted to do was connect it all to make it good for you. Um, the whole app thing, all right, whatever, but what are you playing on your PlayStation? It's an app. Um, and just for me personally, one of the biggest things why I didn't get an Xbox One originally was because of the uh, no disc tray when they said they wasn't going to do that. But fast forward, here I am. I don't remember the last disc game I bought. And Switch doesn't count. Those are carts. You know? So, uh... Yeah, man. Let's, uh... That's really... That's what I gotta say for it tonight, man. I'm excited. I really hope these guys can get their stuff together. I really hope we start getting a, uh... Like, imagine if we start getting a couple first-party games a month. You know what I mean? Or like every three months get another first party game. How insane would that be? That would talk about moving some scales, man. Um But yeah. So for this last part, I uh got my excitement out of the way, I got what I thought out of the way, got some negatives out of the way, had my digs at Call of Duty, had my digs at PlayStation, had my digs at Rainbow. Let's show you guys something I've been covering on the channel for you guys that might not have watched yet. Um we are covering Ground Branch and Zero Hour. Uh, we just started the Ground Branch coverage. We got a couple videos out, but we're doing a uh, Terrorist Hunts um, series on Zero Hour Early Access on Steam. Go support these games, guys. One of them is $20 or $30. Uh, I think that's Ground Branch, but Zero Hour is $12. It is growing rapidly. It is really slow paced, very tactical, uh, has bugs and everything. You can see we're actually going to have a fails video coming up on the channel soon. But um, yeah, check it out, man. Just, uh, well, actually, you know what? I'm just going to leave y'all with the, uh, for the rest of this, I'm going to give y'all a video of that. This has been Low Jack. It's been Thoughts Assembled, episode 17. Thank you guys once again for watching the content. I hope you enjoyed this. We'll get some more video content back on here for you next week. Uh, I just had a whole lot to say about this today, and uh, yeah, so enjoy the uh, Zero Hour videos, uh, and then after that, I have a special surprise for you, so stick around. All right, y'all have a good night. It's been Lojack, Game Thoughts Assembled, episode 17. I'm out. Like, sub, comment, share, tell a friend, do the things. All right, y'all, later. Trippy. Yes. Mm. One down. What you want to do? Let's go up. All right. Close the door. Fine. Fucking. Ooh, straight to the dome. Ooh, you get fucked. That was awesome. Also, let me take this holograph yeah. off of this. This volley. Ooh. That was a vicious headshot. I nailed that dude all the way in the back corner here. Nice. With a one one piece with a pistol. My block is nasty. Alright, there's a few of them up here. Let's hope. Alright, I'm reloading. I need to. But I gotta clear this. Alright, bomb is up here. Alright. I heard it. Yeah. Check to the right here. I hear footsteps. I heard beeping. 
Got a hostage behind me, I think. We have a hostage in this room. This is a fucking bathroom in here, dude. Have you been up here already? No. There's a bunch of dead guys. Oh, dude, I fucking destroyed this room. I killed like five or six dudes. Wait. On the, on the stairwell. Okay, never mind. I fucking zoned out. I forgot. I was... Disregard that, people. Thought it was a different doorway I was in. Oh, shit. My gun keeps on shooting by itself, and it really sucks. Us, Has as as to be because it sounds wonk. I heard, yeah, I heard uh, beeping. So it's got to be this way. There's a stairwell right here. Yeah, just checking this floor clear so I don't get bit in the ass. And I'm trying to show the whole map since this one's actually lit up. On the ones that are super dark, you're gonna have to kind of learn yourself. Wow. Do with a shotgun in the bag. All right. You dead? Yeah, I'm done. All right. I still have uh, a couple of them uh, headshot with the shotgun from behind where you were with the pistol. I was just kind of waiting until you were reloading so I didn't pepper you. See the bomb? I think, did you hear that? The bomb? Yep, yep. Okay, so it's, it's definitely above us. Yeah, and the hostage must be up there too because the bomb might actually be on them. It is on multiplayer. Gun that would have killed the shit out of him five times over. Me low or high, that's a shotgun, dude. That's what they're made for. Sorry, shit pisses me off, dude. Games rarely get shotguns right. Close the door behind you. Still a, uh... wow. There was still one more to the left in there, same spot. All right. He ran into the view. Where are the rest of the pellets? Okay, they disappear. Like that. Why is my gun shooting by itself? Oh, damn. He's right on the other side of that wall. I think I, think I saw him glitch through the wall or something. Find the young lass. Check the uh Okay, so yeah, there's only one bomb. Best part of the game.
but it should have been dead with the first one. Yeah, I like this one a lot. It's just fucking cool. I like being able to use a shotgun. And I really like this. Alright, so I got two hostages to save still, but my time limit's off, right? Yeah, your timer is done. You just have to defuse the bomb in seven minutes. So you can take your time and looks like we have to clear the building as well. I think I just saw her flip through the wall. No! Okay, so... So, he was glitched in front of her. Yeah. And then now she fell through this wall. She is in this wall. Okay, and on my screen, she's to either left. Like, clear as day, you can grab her. That sucks. There we go, there we go. Come on. Will you come through the wall, please? What if I don't look? She's supposed to be following me right now. Looks like she is, I'm on. No way to get to her. She following you? Looks like she's no. He's in the wall for me. Damn. Totally following you on my shit. Okay, so maybe it'll work. He ain't happy. There's the other hostage. Hell yeah. Okay. That melon popped, dude. Thank you for not making him go through me. I got one on my screen. I have no idea what the extraction point is for them, but I'm sure it's just outside. Yeah. I think all the red doors are stairs. I think this is where we came up. Both of them are still following. No. Oh, oh. Both of them are coming. There you go. Kurt, kneel down. Now, if you go back in that door, I don't know if you saw the guy. Yeah. The there. There's, okay. I saw two. Okay. I only saw one. But okay. Both hostages are kneeled down there. Okay. And let me just check the objective real quick. Both complete. All right. Order to chaos. Good job on the shotguns for the most part, guys. I'm really glad that I don't have to worry about the hostage being in the wall because it um it was clear she fell straight through the wall on my screen. Wish I knew how many of them there were. Yeah, hold on, let me double check. I don't think it tells you this time. Oh, eleven. You have eleven left. All right.
some yelling up here if you have not. I do not. I'm gonna go all the way up and start down. That was cool. Flashbang oh, okay. sounds are terrible. You killed that guy when you first walked in? He was uh, flashbanged and I got I secured his weapon. Okay. Still fucking alive on my screen. Well, just for measure. He did now. <laughs> right? I mean, fuck it. Take the penalty. Nine. Oh. That sounded like it was so much further away than it was. Yeah, that's a thing is yeah, fuck. All right, that was a good second run. Good shotgun run for sure. Hell yeah, dude, that was real good. Should be able to get it. I'm about to eat some dinner though. No problem. And then uh yeah, I want to try that one again cuz that one's actually I think this one's easier than the last one. Speed them past them, what the hell you wanna do? I can crash them, yeah, could you do that shit, my lady? Yeah, her fucking titties grasp them, yeah, the fucking bra, she just unclasp them, unclasp them, let's do that shit, can I get the cheeks, yeah, clap them, yeah. simple simplicity, do that shit, can you get it, can you mention me, can I get in your Twitter, can I be the DM, can you do that shit, can you get up on me when I'm just through the MC, man, who do that shit, can I do that shit, them MT3 cans, 3 cans, who do that, baby, can I get up on the taxi, do that shit with the ecstasy, yeah, she's about to test me, and I want to say, like, baby, can we do that? Can you lick the testes? Or at least smoke the fucking meat, baby? Let's do that. His direct to me. His direct to me. He don't like me, like I said before, though. Do that shit, like, what the hell? You know he's not going to be knocking on doors, bro. Because I'm knocking these doors down. Yeah. Let's do that shit. I'm such a don. Do that shit. Yeah, water in her pond. Water yeah. in her pond. I mean, I'm just flooding the basement. Do that shit. And I got to fucking waste it while her ass was tasting. A little bit of sausage. Yeah, that German fucking kielbasa. Do that shit. What the hell you want to tell her, baby? I just fucking lost Lost ya in the pasta, those lost in the pasta. What the fuck you wanna do? Yeah, just another rap monster or imposter. What the fuck you wanna tell me? Ooh, baby, let's do that shit. Timmy with the crutch out, with the crutch out. But inside of the crutch is a sword and a fucking switchblade in my backseat. No, that baby laid out, bleed on me. I'm talking about, yeah, let's do it nasty. And I see her aura cause we fucking tripping on the acid. Yeah, she gets nasty me, actually. Yeah, can we do it blowing on the trees? Yeah, do that, that's the basic part of me, the basic part of me. Don't do that, don't wanna take no part to see. You ought to be, you ought to be. Yeah, on your fucking TV screen, on the fucking cream, on the cash. Yeah, really. Don't do that, baby, let's do it. Yeah, you grow, really. <laughs> and I do this just to get the voices to stop. 
Say something.